While NASA engineers figure out how to get to Mars, others are working on how the trip and the planet will affect humans. Scientists are working on things like deep space hibernation, protective Mars cave dwellings, and other human factor technology. We learned more from several experts at the Hello Tomorrow conference in Paris. Uh, with the hibernation uh, sort of approach, we can address the engineering challenges, the medical issues, as well as, I think, uh, mitigate some of these psychological uh, challenges and conditions the crew has to go through. Torpor, otherwise known as therapeutic hypothermia, eases medical issues but also makes NASA and SpaceX's travel plans easier. Begin by uh, basically cooling down, uh, cooling down the body. Initially your body tries to kind of recover or wake up from that through some shivering and you know it doesn't like being cooled so we have some pharmaceuticals that unique pharmaceuticals that suppress that reaction. Torpor sounds scary but it has been used for years in a medical treatment called therapeutic hypothermia. You're cooled from your normal body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius to as low as 32 degrees. Uh, we maintain you in that state for days or weeks on end and uh, until you either reach your destination or we kind of reach the limit or the end of a cycle and we'd warm you back up, be active for two or three days and then we could cool you down again and repeat the process. NASA is testing drugs that make your body think the lower hypothermia temperatures are normal. You'd also have a tube inserted into your stomach to feed you, electrical stimulation to reduce muscle atrophy, an oxygen hood, heart and breathing sensors, and a waste collection system. I think within, uh, within two years, we could have the initial, initial human trial results. And that's kind of a go forward point on if things are gonna work out like we've envisioned them. With all of this, NASA Mars transporters could be reduced in weight by nearly half, making it possible to transport more people. Once you're on Mars, however, your problems are not over. I think some of the biggest challenges are obviously the pressure environment. So since the pressure is so low, people are going to have to wear spacesuits. The other thing is the temperature. So the temperature gets really, really cold at night. Another issue is resources like water, minerals, oxygen, and building materials. NASA scientists have already used the Curiosity rover to study radiation, the atmosphere, and geology of the Red Planet. But there's still a lot we don't know. Something that we're definitely going to do is the Mars 2020 rover that's coming up soon. So that's mostly a mission for choosing. It's going to look for life and habitable environments and it's going to choose samples to potentially bring back to the Earth. What would be the ideal place to live according to Kerber? She has her eye on a spot near the equator rich in fine-grained construction materials and with cliffs that could be hollowed out to build caves. Because I, I kind of think on Mars you're going to be living right at the edge of technology, like the most advanced technology possible, but you're also going to be living a really primitive existence. And so I kind of imagine us going back to our cave dwelling days where if you're inside a cave you're protected from radiation, you're protected from temperature swings, and if you're in the side of a cliff at least you're not totally underground so you can have nice windows. 